Welcome to Part 91, my report on the McCarrick Report by Patrick Parson. Today we will finish Chapter 24, McCarrick's Activity and Holy See Decision-Making, during the first eighteen months of Archbishop Vigano's tenure as Apostolic Nuncio, Fall 2011 to Spring 2013. As we look at Section C, McGarrick's activity during the transition from Pope Benedict XVI to Pope Francis, February to March 2013. On February 10, 2013, Pope Benedict issued a Declaratio, and I had to look up the term Declaratio, since it's not defined in the report. Declaratio is a Latin term that means the act of making clear, or a disclosure, or a declaration. So Pope Benedict issued a Declaratio announcing he would resign his office effective February 28, and McGarrick saw the Pope in his February 13th general audience, and Pope Benedict's final general audience on February 28th. On February 14, 2013, McCarrick, staying out of the limelight as ever, sat for an interview for National Catholic Reporter. The published article stated, quote, Despite his age, McCarrick, the former Archbishop of Washington, keeps up a hectic travel schedule and has a wide network of friends among senior churchmen on every continent, giving him a first-hand sense of the thinking in various corners of the world." Unquote. Now how's that for living a quiet life of prayer and reflection? Ironically enough, McCarrick recommended that when Pope Benedict retired, he should stay out of the public view, saying, quote, In my case, I did what one should do, which is I disappeared for a couple of years until everybody knew who their archbishop was. Now I can take a mass from time to time, but I was out of sight for the first two years. I'm sure this man will do even more than that, because he'll get older and weaker, unquote. McCarrick may have disappeared in his own eyes, but from what we have read in the report, practically everyone else in the world seemed to have opportunity to be exposed to him. Now, McCarrick also suggested that having a Latin American Pope would be a great idea. The media was discussing sexual misconduct on the part of certain cardinals, but McCarrick's name was not part of that list. The individual figuring most prominently at this time was Cardinal Keith O'Brien, Archbishop of St. Andrews in Edinburgh, who resigned as Archbishop after being publicly accused of past incidents of sexual misconduct with adults. He did not attend the upcoming conclave to elect the next pope. News media was also focusing on Cardinal Mahoney, Archbishop Emeritus of Los Angeles, for not having handled abuse cases properly. A footnote says considerable public pressure was placed on him to not attend the conclave. But the footnote does not say whether he attended or not. Presumably he did attend the conclave in 2013 to participate in voting for a new pope. And the report tells us that, although McCarrick was in Rome during the conclave, he was ineligible to vote because he was over 80 years old. That does not mean he was out of the picture, though. A footnote on page 391 states, quote, 
during the general congregations, voting and non-voting cardinals, come together to pray and express their thoughts regarding the needs of the Church and the qualities that might be important for the next Pope to possess. McCarrick was visible during the general congregations in 2013, meeting daily with the other cardinals. Neither cardinals nor journalists raised issues about his presence. In an interview, Pope Francis vaguely recalled McCarrick's presence during the congregations, but did not recollect having any discussions with him. Unquote. And with that, we end Chapter 24 of the McCarrick Report, leaving us just six chapters and 56 pages of the report to go. In this chapter, we have seen much confusion and miscommunication among people and groups. Let us avoid miscommunicating with God by praying the Fatima prayer. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy.